Jerry Lawson. I paved the way for newest generation consoles such as Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation, and more. I also created the Fairchild Channel F console. I was born December 1st, 1940 in Brooklyn, New York. As a teenager, I lived in Queens, New York, and I also earned money by fixing people's TV sets. Sadly, I got diabetes, and I lost the sight of one eye, and I lost use of one leg. Sadly, I died one month after being honored for the IGDA, International Game Developers Association, for creating the Fairchild Channel F console, the first interchangeable game cartridges, and the pause button. I, Jerry Lawson, brought home video gaming to life. singles on Billboard chart, and I sold 75 million records worldwide. Oh, and did I mention I was the first woman, not to mention the first Negro woman, to make it onto the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? But there's more to me than what the media sees. Yeah, I have been through a lot. When I was younger, I suffered from a lot of anxiety and depression. But I'm so glad that I've overcame that and became the person I am today. One thing that helped me cope with that was my singing. My mother influenced me. She wasn't that good of an influence, but her singing inspired me. She left me and my family when I was young. Also, I was very inspired by my girl Tina Turner. Her confidence and her passion for singing helped me become who I am today. I got pregnant and had my first child at the age of 12. It was very hard for me and my daddy. Well, he had to raise me, my four siblings, and my child. By the age of 16, I had gotten my first job. I was independent and making my own money. I wrote my first song at the age of two. Well, if you wanna learn more about me and how I help the black community in their civil rights movements and acts, could step right over here and read more on my board. Hello, my name is Misty Copeland. I took my first breath on Earth September 10, 1982. You may know me for being the first African American ballerina to join an American Ballet Theater. You may also know me for accomplishing goals. Here are some fun facts about me. My biggest inspiration is Alvin Ailey. Another fact about me is I won two medals in Kansas City, Missouri, where I was born. And lastly, I won the 75 year history Grammy Award. Here are some tips you might want to learn. Never give up and you can be whatever you want as long as you put your mind to it.
Grace Coachman. I'm the first African American woman to win gold at the Olympics. Trust me, it was hard to get here. My parents didn't support my interest in athletics, and on top of that, I grew up in the segregated South where I was often denied the rights to train. So I had to use my creativity by running barefoot in fields and using all these equipment. I led an initiative at the Alice Coachman Track and Field Foundation, where I supplied young athletes with assistance. My passion for sports allowed me to prove to the world that it only takes one person with the right mindset to pursue their dreams, no matter who's against it. Hello, my name is Kathleen Cleaver. I was born May 13, 1945 in Dallas, Texas. I joined the Black Panther Power Movement when one of my childhood friends, Samuel Lehman Young, who was a civil rights and voting activist, was murdered by white supremacists. After Samuel died, I moved to San Francisco in 1967 to join the Black Panther Party Movement. I was the first female to be a part of the decision-making body on the Black Panther panel. I was also the communications secretary. I held many responsibilities, such as organizing demonstrations, holding press conferences, creating pamphlets, designing posters, and speaking at events and on television. I married Eldred Cleaver on December 27, 1967, and, and had two kids with him. I divorced Eldred Cleaver and earned a law degree at Leo Law School. Hi, I'm Mamie Smith. I was born May 26, 1891. I'm a dancer, actor, singer, and pianist. I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio with my brother Doc and my two parents, Benjamin Robinson and Amanda Harvey. I grew up when the depression came into a spark, but that didn't stop me. At age 10, I started dancing and toying with the four dancing Michelles and only grew from there. At age 36, I had my hit song, Crazy Blues, and became the first African-American woman to have a famous blues song. I've been in over 25 movies like Sunday Sinners and Murder on the Knox Avenue. I died September 16, 1946, due to severe arthritis in Staten Island, New York. I died penniless and without a headstone. A campaign, a, campaign, a campaign was started and raised over $8,000, and I got a granite headstone. I, now I lay in Frederick Douglass Memorial Park. Hi, I'm Madam T.J. Walker. I was born on December 23rd, 1867. I'm an entrepreneur, activist, and philanthropist. I faced hair loss, so I built a beauty business in hopes to find a cure. I invented the world's first hair straightening formula and the hot plug. I made a change in history because I became the first African-American female millionaire. I sadly died on May 25th, 1919. I would like to be remembered as an African-American businesswoman and self-made millionaire. If you want to accomplish anything in life, you have to be willing to work hard. Hello, I'm Harriet Tubman. I was born and stayed in Dorchester, Maryland. I started to work as a house slave at the age of six. By the age of 13, I suffered a terrible injury. A slave owner was angry at one of their slaves, so they threw a two pound weight at the slave. But unfortunately, it missed the slave and hit me on the head instead. I suffered a lipsy and narcolepsy for the rest of my life. By the age of 20, I was going to get sold to another slave owner, but I decided enough was enough, so I escaped. I escaped twice. Once with my brothers, but they were afraid that they might get caught, so they turned back. The second time I escaped, I escaped alone. As I got older, I started to read the Bible. I read the story of Moses, who went to free the people of Israel from Egypt. I worked as a nurse and a spy for, Union, for the Union Army. I also conducted at the Underground Railroad for 11 years. Most people say I'm important to history because I've helped slaves gain their freedom. My impact on the world has helped end slavery throughout the United States. Hello, 
my name is Ruby Bates. I was born September 8, 1954 in Tylertown, Mississippi. I was the oldest of my four siblings. When I was four years old, me and my parents moved to New Orleans. I was known as the first African-American child to go to an all-white school. My all-white school was named William Penn's Elementary Public School. Every, every time I went to the entry of my school, people would shout at me, pitch at me, and throw objects at me, but I kept on going. Hi, I'm Jack Johnson, but some people call me Galvestine Giant. I was born March 31st, 1878. I had to drop out I had to drop out in the fifth grade to work as a dog boy. At the age of 20, I started boxing. I am a heavyweight champion with 73 wins, 13 losses, and 10 draws. I sadly died due to a car crash in 1946. The whole reason I started boxing was to help support my family and my former slave parents, Henry and Tina, who had to work hard to raise several children. My name is Josh Gibson. I was born on December 21st, 1911. I grew up in Buena Vista, Georgia with my brother, Jerry Gibson, and my sister, Annie Gibson. I play baseball. The position I play is catcher and I'm a power hitter. My batting average is a 347. My hits are an 807. And my home runs are a 164. I'm so great at what I do in baseball that I even made it in the Hall of Fame. Sadly, I died in 1947 due to a stroke. Hello, I'm Frederick Douglass. I'm a writer, an orator, and an abolitionist. I was born in 1818 a slave to a black mother and white father in a Taliban country. At the age of eight, I was taken away from my family to live in the household of Hugh Auld. His wife taught me the alphabet, but not too soon after, Hugh Auld forbid it. So I traded bread with white children so they could teach me how to read. I attempted to escape many, many times, but finally I used a sailor's outfit as a disguise and rode a train to Philadelphia. I found a small job and started attending abolitionist meetings where I talked about my experience in slavery and I also wrote books about these experiences in slavery. I confronted Abraham Lincoln to discuss that slaves should fight in the Union and that the goal of the war is, was to abolish slavery. I also supported women's rights. I made the North Star, a newspaper that denounced slavery, but not only that, but it also fought for the emancipation of women. But sadly, in 1895, I died to a heart attack. I am Medgar Evers. I was born on July 2nd, 1925 in Decatur, Mississippi. I was one of five children born to my parents, James and Jesse Evans. My father, James, worked in a sawmill while my mother was a laundress. Growing up in the Jim Crow era, life was very challenging. We were exposed to unimaginable racial discrimination. Eventually, I went on to high school and college where I earned my B.A. degree. In the military, I was a World War II veteran. Also, I was the NAACP's first field secretary in Mississippi. In that position, I organized voting registration efforts and economic boycotts. Unfortunately, on July 12, 1963, I was assassinated by a white supremacist by the name of Byron de la Beckworth. I was later buried with full military honors in Arlington National Cemetery. You can kill a man, but you can never kill an idea, and freedom is never free. Mm -hmm. I'm Kamala Harris. 
and I became the first African American to become Vice President. I was born on October 20th, 1964. I grew up during the time of segregation, so I was treated unfairly because of the color of my skin. But as I got older, I was able to graduate from Howard University and the University of California. Then I became an attorney in San Francisco. I was also elected to become State Attorney General in California. After that, I was, I was voted to become the Vice President. I'm Amanda Gorman. I was born on March 7, 1998, Los Angeles, California, along with my twin sister, Gabrielle. When I was younger, I had a speech impediment that made it difficult to pronounce some words. I was only eight years old when I first started to love poetry. I graduated from Harvard University and am the first youth poet laureate in U.S. history. I was handpicked by the first lady, Jill Biden, to speak at President Biden's inauguration. There, I read my most famous poem, The Hill Be Kind. Most of my poetry focuses on social change and social injustice. I was the most searched poet in 2021. Poetry is my superpower, and I'm glad I can share my creativity with the world and inspire many others to achieve their dreams. Hi, my name is Mary Elizabeth Bowser. I was born a slave to owner John Van Loo. I am a former slave as well as a Union spy in the Civil War. I work for President Jefferson Davis in Richmond as a house staff at the Confederate White House. While working as a spy, I was feeding vital information to the Union. I married fellow I married fellow Van Lou Wilson Bowser on, on 18, April 16, 1861, making me Mary Elizabeth Bowser. Unfortunately, not much is known about me and my work as a spy. After the Civil War, the government, the U.S. government, destroyed any record of me, so there's no longer any, there's no further information of me and what I did after the Civil War. Hi, I'm Dorothy Dandridge. I was born 1922, November 9th, in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm an actress, singer, and dancer. Most people know me for being in the film industry during segregation. I refused black demanding roles. I was the first black woman to be on the cover of the Life magazine. I had two husbands, Jack Denson and Harold Nicholas. Sadly, in 1965, I died due to an accidental overdose. Look at my poster to find out more. My name is George Washington Carver. I was born into slavery in 1861 and I lived through the Civil War. I was an inventor, professor, and chemist. I invented over 300 products using peanuts, though I didn't invent peanut butter. For example, some of the things I did invent were Worcester sauce, cooking oils, hair oils, and skin lotion. Though, unfortunately, I died January 5th, 1943, after achieving the impossible. Aretha Franklin. I was born on March 25th, 1942. I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee with my dad and my mom. When I reached the age of six, my parents unfortunately split up, so I picked my mom until about the age of 10. When I reached the age of 10, when I reached the age of 10, my mom unfortunately passed away due to a heart attack. So I grew up with my dad, C.L. Franklin. He was the pastor of New Bethel Baptist Church, where I started singing. I sang there until I reached the age of 14 and got my own record label. I kept making music and I got two honorary doctor degrees of Berkeley College and Yale University. I grew up to get married to a man named Ted White. Unfortunately, we got divorced and I had problems with alcohol and depression. I kept making music for almost 50 years. I kept making music for more than 50 years. 
but unfortunately I died on August 16, 2018. I am remembered as the Queen of Soul. My famous quote is, love is like losing weight. It's hard, it's easier putting it on than taking it off. I say you a little bit for you. My name is Irene Morgan Kirkwood. Before Claudette Colvin and Rosa Parks, I was the first African American to refuse to give up my seat to a white person. I'm also a civil rights activist who won a 1946 U.S. Supreme Court case of refusing to give up my seat to a white person. Irene Morgan versus Commonwealth of Virginia. to Sing America. Hi, my name is Langston Hughes. I'm a social activist, poet, novelist, and playwright. I was born February 1st, 1901. At the age of 13, I started making poets, and that's how I became famous in the Harlem Renaissance. On, in 1924, I published my first ever book named The Weary Blues. Sadly, at the age of 66, I died from prostate cancer. My name is Benjamin Banneker. I am a self-educated scientist. I was born on November 9, 1731 in Ellicott Mills, Maryland. My grandmother and mother taught me to read. My grandmother was a white indentured servant who paid off her debt and bought a farm. Then she married one of her slaves, Banneker. They had my mother, Mary. I attended a Quaker school for a few seasons. The rest of my education was self-taught. I enjoyed reading about math, science, and astronomy. My neighbors, the Ellicott brothers, let me borrow books to expand my knowledge. I also worked with the Ellicott brothers on surveying the nation's capital. We measured the land and its angles to create this map. I used to work with the man hired to design the nation's capital. He quit and took the plans with him. I remembered the plans and recreated them. I saved the nation's capital we know today. I always felt that the color of the skin is in no way connected to the strength of the mind or intellectual powers. One challenge that I faced was, even though I helped save the nation's capital, I was not given recognition because of the color of my skin. Some major achievements of mine are I wrote a series of six almanacs. In my almanacs, I made scientific predictions on the sun, moon, and planets. These predictions were helpful to farmers and sailors. One of my famous inventions was my wooden clock. I studied the pieces of a pocket watch, then I replicated them out of wood. My clock lasted 50 years. I am a self-educated scientist and I love learning. Lastly, I wrote a letter to Thomas Jefferson. I was concerned about how black people were being treated. I thought Jefferson could help me speak out against this injustice. Jefferson agreed with me, but unfortunately, he did not make any changes. I published his letter to me in one of my almanacs. If I, if I would have any advice, it would be, never abandon your vision, keep reaching to further your dream. I was born November 23rd, 1921. I am known as a civil rights activist and educator. In 1955, my only son, Emmett Till, was brutally murdered and tortured by two white men for allegedly being disrespectful to their wife. I was devastated, but I decided it was more important to grieve later and take action now. So with the help of the NAACP, I was able to get a court case. During my court case, I was mocked and made fun of by other white people, but it didn't matter to me. I ended up winning the court case and went down in history as one of the first African-American women to win a court case in America. Hi, my name is Althea Gibson. I was born August 25th, 1927. I was known for being the first African-American tennis player in the women's industry in the 1950s. 
I was also the first black golfer to be in the Ladies Professional Golf Association. I won five single titles, five double titles, and one mixed double title. I was the first black player to win the French Wimbledon and U.S. Open. I sadly passed away September 28, 2003 after respiratory failure. If I can accomplish one thing, it would be to have the title of the first black tennis player and a credit to my country. I was born on November 26, 1939, in Memphis, Tennessee. I love to sing. It was my passion. I also really love to dance. It's how I got these amazing legs. I graduated from Sumner High School in 1958. When I moved to St. Louis, Missouri, I began to immerse myself in the local rhythm and blues scene. And I was introduced to the public during the 1960s. After I divorced my recent ex-husband, I began my, in 1978, I began my solo career. I'm known for being a famous singer, songwriter, actress, and dancer. My biggest hit, Private Dancer, won three Grammys sold, and sold more than 20 million copies worldwide. I now have the title, Queen of Rock and Roll. And after my last tour in 2007, I won. After my last tour in 2007, I retired, but I still got to live the best life. Do you want to know who helped people go to the moon and back? Well, hi, I'm Katherine Johnson. I'm a mathematician that works for NASA. I was born on August 26, 1918. I grew up in White Sulphur Springs in West Virginia. I graduated high school at age 14. My mother was a teacher and my father was a farmer and janitor. In 1969, I mapped Apollo 11's path to history. I'm a mathematician, teacher, writer, physicist, and computer scientist. I want to be remembered as a great mathematician that helped people get along for me. Hello, my name is Ray Charles. I was a musician that received the Presidential Medal for the Irishman President Bill Clinton. When I was three years old, I started playing the piano. I became blind because of an eye disease called glaucoma. I attended a school in Florida for the blind and at age 15, I became a musician. My first set was called Baby Let Me Hold Your Hand. I took a break from playing music because I was addicted to drugs and I spent a year in jail. My movie was called The Blues Brothers. I was inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and received a Lifetime Achievement Award and the Kennedy Center Honors Award. I didn't allow, I didn't allow blindness to stop me from my dreams. I was born January 26, 1892, and sadly passed away April 30th, 1926, due to falling off of a plane at the age of 30. My name is Malcolm X, the great even brother Malcolm, was born May 19, 1925. I do boycotts or speeches. That's not. I do boycotts or sit That's not my thing. I do speeches. That's what I'm most known for. On March 1964, I left this nation to Mecca, and I found the Muslim Mosque Incorporated. During my pilgrimage to Mecca, I experienced the second conversions to Sunni Islam, adopting my Muslim name. And later the next year, I died. I was shot multiple times and later died. I'm not sad I died. I know I can fight for you, mom, sisters, your brothers, we love open opportunities and freedom. I said that once, I'll say it again. I look like a man who's already dead. Hi. Oh. Hi, my name is Cicely Tyson, and I rock this world like my Tyson. For this freedom, I be fighting. It's no wonder I'm an icon. Check my stats, I'm the bomb. You can ask your dad and your mom. On the screen, I perform. I was born in 1924. My folks wanted me to be a typist. I said, no, I'm an actress and an activist. And I stand up for my people with my fists like this. So say love, say love. I'm black and I'm proud. So when they ask you my name, it's Cicely Tyson and I joined the game. 